Dungeons and Drimbus is rated R for rude language, rough violence, and raunchy humor. Here is what happened previously on Yes Chef. After making a rapid escape from the hospital, Butch and Kilana stop at a red light before the lunch ladies pull up in a massive food truck. In a bout of vehicular combat, Butch reaches into the glove compartment, hands Kilana is gone, and she takes her first life. As the lunch ladies lose control, they manage to make their escape and head out to see the butcher. One España welcomes them, gives them a change of clothes, some drinks, they play two truths and a lie, and they gear up with presents from the butcher. Kilana promises to bring Butch back alive in exchange for a lifetime supply of free shrimp. And, with the Butcher's help, they arrange a meeting with the Frenchman, the Devil's right hand, and head out to the nightclub to find him. And now, Dungeons and Dreamers presents Yeshef. And once again, here we are, <laughs> in the car, just the two of us. <laughs> Kalana's going to do what she always does and just look over at Ch- <laughs> Yeah, he feels the look and he says, do you need some rest? Yeah, well, I mean, okay, I get it. You're, you know, big, strong chef over here. You, uh, But if you also, you should rest too at some point. I know you're going to say no. I know you're totally going to say no. But when you're ready to switch... I am also capable of driving cars and probably not getting hit by food trucks in the process. <laughs> Just saying that much. That was a that was a joke, by the way. I don't know if I, I heard you laugh once before, so I just wasn't sure if um you would be capable of doing it twice in one day. I could use a rest. And she'll like look at him like with wide eyes like Yeah? Do you, I can start the drive. I can do the beginning if you want to do like the rest of it. Okay. Wake me when you need me. And from that, he's going to step up mid drive. <laughs> oh my God. That oh she my God. grabs it. Oh my God. 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 What's wrong with you? Why? Why would you do it like that? Kill on her roll body to try and successfully switch into the driver's seat mid drive out of New me? York City. Oh God. <laughs> no. Oh, 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 you're so lucky. You're so lucky. I rolled a 12. <laughs> Panic makes adrenaline course through your veins and you like instinctively swap into the seat. Oh my God. As you look over and Butch is already asleep. Oh my God. What the? F- and she like holds a fist like right over his head. Like she just wants to like hit him like. And she doesn't. Obviously she's like, oh my God. And she puts her hands back on the wheel. She's like, what the fuck? Who the, what the fuck? What the fuck? Ah, <laughs> oh, chill, chill, kill, chill, kill. It's okay. Clearly, it's okay. Clearly, everything is gonna be okay. <laughs> Butch, it is only a two hour drive, so choose HP, focus, or charges. Which would you like to restore? Mm, focus. Okay. So with that, while your body does not have enough time to heal from its wounds, you will awake fully mentally sharp and aware and ready to go. And roughly two hours later, Kilana the GPS lets you know that you have arrived at your destination. A large building with a packed parking lot and a great big attention-grabbing pink neon sign that reads, The Fop Bucket, with a logo depicting liquid splashing out of said bucket. The place immediately just grosses you out. But Butch, as you awake, the sight of the place fills you with an immediate strong sense of nostalgia. Like returning to work after a two-week vacation, or revisiting your hometown after years away. We're here. Yeah, no kidding. And Co will pull into a parking spot and put the car in park. Yeah, as you begin to pull into the parking spot, you see that off to the rear of the building is the loading bay where deliveries are checked in. 
Butch, you know that there will be at least one employee there to receive any and all shipments, but you also know that that is where this truck is expected to go, and perhaps your best shot at entering using Juan's ploy. He's going to look in the back and look for any cardboard boxes that, like, food would go into normally. Roll a flat D12. Yeah, with nothing added, that's a six. Okay, clearly whatever this truck delivered last, Juan, as usual, did a pretty good job of cleaning up, so there is one, like, deconstructed cardboard box. Kilana, I think I may have you sit in the box. Uh, <clears throat> what? <laughs> Don't want them to know you're here. And the solution is for me to get in the box right until we find you a uniform oh you know what i'm gonna shut up and i'm gonna get in the box chef i'm just gonna get right in the f- goddamn freaking box and kalana's like undoing the seatbelt as she's talking I guess i'll just get in the box i drove two hours no thank you no good morning i'll get in the freaking box i guess all right Kalana's getting in the box. Okay, Kalana's <laughs> in the box. And Chef puts a little straw for you to breathe. I, it's a, she's going to like push the straw back out. She's like, it's a box, Chef. I, it's, a, it's just a box. There's no tape. It's just a box. He's going to get in the driver's seat and drive to the shipping bay. Okay. Give me a mind check. Critical fail. <gasps> okay. You drive up to the loading bay and you see there are two guards out front. One man, one woman clad in all blacks. They raise the loading bay door and begin to walk up to the truck, waving at you. You see the woman begin to make her way around towards the back of the truck, and the man comes up to the driver's side window. Hey, from uh, Spanish Cut? Yes. Oh, hold up. Orson? That you? I thought you retired. I thought so, too. What are you doing back here? I'm making a delivery for a friend. Alright, yeah, we have uh, three cases of Wagyu in here. Yes. Okay. Uh, Yeah, just pull it in right here. Okay. As you do, you see he begins to work his way around to the back of the truck with the woman. Yeah, he'll step out of the door and then, like, go to the back to open it for them. Okay. You open the back, and then the woman goes, what? One box? And he's going to pick her up and throw her into the back of the (laughs) truck. Okay, roll for initiative. Uh, Butch, you're going to go first. So <laughs> Fuck yeah. I think I'm going to stay in the box, respectfully. Okay, Butch, roll body, I guess, to try and shove her into the back of the truck. All right, it's an eight. That is a mixed success. So she turns around to look at you, and then you just shove her into the truck, and she goes, ah! And she falls backward, but then you see she immediately draws a pistol ready to go. That is your first action point, though, as she goes, what the fuck is going on? Orson, what? He would like to basically grab his gun and knife and hold him as like a hostage. Give me a body roll for that. Can I add disarm? Yeah. Fuck yeah. With my body and with disarming, the six becomes a nine. As you shove this woman into the truck, Frederica, are you okay? And before he even finishes his sentence, you reach around him almost in a hug and he goes, Orson? And then you draw his pistol and knife. You put the knife to his throat and the pistol to his head. Drop the pistol. Frederica eyes you. You see her finger begins to squeeze on the trigger. Give me a persuasion roll. So, Will. It's a five. Okay. So, here's what's going to happen. You turn around and say, drop the gun. But Frederica has already pulled the trigger. However, she rolls a mixed success. And the bullet goes straight through the man you are holding. It deals three damage as he looks on and he goes, Frederica? Oh my god, I'm sorry, Rich! And you feel the bullet impact against your new chef's jacket. It would deal three HP worth of damage, but because it is resistant to bullets, it gets halved and rounded down, so you only take one damage to your armor. And Rich begins to bleed out rapidly. Uh, what's... What's happening? Frederica drops the gun. She goes, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, please, please help him. Now, Kilana. Eh, Kilana's gonna jump out of the box. What the fuck? <laughs> She's gonna go for the gun that Frederica just dropped and then aim it at her. Okay, yeah, you're you're aiming it. Are you firing or are you just trying to scare her? I think I'm just gonna try and scare her. I think she is sufficiently scared as she puts her hands up. She goes, what the, what do you want? What do you want? Please, Rich, no. And you just see, as you're holding Rich, he collapses in your arms, but Orson, an honor to see you at work. 
<laughs> and he passes out. <laughs> and yeah, I'll lay him in the back of the truck. Yeah, Frederica eyes all of this as you drag his dead and or dying body. And she goes, what are you, what's happening? Where's the Frenchman? Upstairs in his office. Take the day off. He's going to knock her out. Ooh, roll body with luck. Critical <laughs> You say, take the day off, and you grab the butt of the pistol to hit her in the forehead, and instead you hit Kalana in the chest. Oh, what the fuck, chef? What the fuck? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. They don't pay me enough. They don't pay me enough. I'll go. I wish I could believe you. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> Roll again flat this time. Okay, that's a 10. You don't have to... And she slumps out. <sighs> get dressed and he's gonna start undressing the bleeding guy and put on their uniform okay yeah it's all blacks so you can easily get into them you will have to take your armor off though okay yeah okay um kilana do you change as well y yeah well i'm gonna wait for him well I'll okay well when you finish changing then i'll change jesus okay he drags the bodies in he lowers the door he changes he opens it and then steps out onto the loading bay yeah thank you I'll close the door. I'll start changing. I'll also, I feel bad. I'm going to like put my stuff like on top of Frederica just so that she's not like, <laughs> you know, indecent either. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chef just left Rich like contorted and in his underwear, like <laughs> in a heap in the corner. Yeah. Well, he's dead, right? He's yeah, bleeding he's out. Dead. He might die. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. I, that's. That's fucked. All right. And for, <laughs> and Kalana will then open the door and leave them. So I'll just like empty his gun and, and fill mine up and then... So you have six bullets again. Um, well, she'll take the other gun. I'll drop one of their pistols down a sewer drain. Okay, yeah. You load up your bullets. You dispose of the guns that you do not need. <laughs> You're fully stocked up. You close the truck door and then you lock it with a padlock and prepare to enter the Fop Bucket. So Butch, you are intimately familiar with the Fop Bucket, having spent many, many hours and days here. So you know that from the loading bay, you can make your way into the kitchen. Through the kitchen, you can make your way through the dance floor, and you do hear the thumping bass even all the way out here. And you can make it to a staircase that leads up to the Frenchman's office. Yes, I think we'll do that disguised as employees. Fantastic. Give me stealth rolls. Kel got a nine. Eight. <laughs> Nate and a nine. In your disguises, fully loaded and ready to go, you make your way into the fop bucket through the loading bay, and finally into the kitchen. The booming bass permeates your bones. Butch, you get that terribly uncanny feeling of visiting a unfamiliar, familiar place. You know this kitchen so well, and yet you recognize no one. Roll a mine for me, both of you. Seven. Eight. Okay. Both of you notice, as you slink your way through the kitchen, largely unnoticed, you see the double doors. All you've got to do is make it out those doors, across the dance floors, and up the staircase on the other end. But then you turn back, and you notice that people have gone. The kitchen was bustling and busy, and now it's nearly empty. You turn back around in the direction you were headed. No, it's completely empty. The lights flicker, and as they come back up, you are suddenly face to face with a man. A tall, slender man in a double-breasted black jacket. Slicked back black hair that drops to just above his shoulders and a black goatee. Butch, you are face to face with the nightclub manager, John Westingham. His nose is inches from yours as he looks you dead in the eyes. Mr. Orson, I had not expected to see you here again. Who is Mr. Orson? The nightclub manager, or as you best know him, the straight shooter, says, Coming here was a mistake, and I harbor a mild amount of remorse for what happens now. The lights flicker off. The two of you are plunged into darkness for a moment before the dingy lights come back on. The straight shooter is gone. There are now three stripper poles around you, <laughs> and on the stripper poles are scantily clad women. Cindy, the blonde clad in blue, 
Mindy, the brunette in bright orange, and Wendy, the redhead in scarlet red. The manager's partners in business and romance, better known as the spirits. They each throw back a shot with a giggle, and the manager's voice speaks out from a PA system in the kitchen. Rules of engagement, Mr. Orson, and companion. Keep it to the kitchen. Do not disturb the guests. We shall make your death a quick one, broiler. Roll for initiative. Hello? Hey, Toots. Um, uh, Mr. Pow, I will remind you that my name is Mrs. Loblaw. Yeah, yeah, whatever. L- listen, I need some help. There's got to be something we can do about this, this blackmail situation, you know? Mr. Pow, need I remind you that he hasn't actually threatened you with anything? Yeah, but he did. He, he, he got me on the phone. I heard all of it. Did, did you record the phone call? Oh, well, no, but, but I was there. Mr. Pow, it is... Three o'clock in the morning. My life is at jeopardy, okay? I, he wants me to meet him at, at some, some shady, seedy bar at midnight, and he's threatening to release all of my information to the Dungeons & Dremors patrons. Okay, okay, what does he want? I don't know. Then, obviously, I would suggest not going, Mr. Pow. But what if he releases my information? He has the tapes where I did the thing that might have to do something with the other 12 lawsuits I got going on right now. Uh, Mr. Pow, I thought we both agreed it was better that I had as little knowledge about that as possible for us to work together. Oh, God, what's, what, what am I even paying you for, huh? I suggest you don't go to the meeting. If you have definitive proof that he threatened you, then we can move forward. Yeah, well, I suggest you take a long walk off a short pier. Mr. Pow, if you are going to keep calling me at 3 a.m. every night because you have some problem or some delusion or fantasy, then you need to find a different lawyer that's going to take your shit seriously because I'm done. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Is that true, Mrs. Toots? Yes, well, then, it's, it's yeah. blah, blah. Okay, well, guess what? Guess what, Mrs. Toots? I'm going to call up all my friends right now. I'm logging on to the patron oh, discord yeah. uh-huh. for all of the patrons of patreon.com slash drippers and I'll tell them to go leave a one star review okay. for Mrs. Toots. Oh okay? Get ready. Here they come. Uh-huh. Jerry Benetados, Queso Loco, Victoria Madrid, Greta Beignet, Alex Gates My Yes, A. Sandrews, Regina Russell, Sam Olivos, Jordan Cobb, The Unnamed Rogue, NB Star, Doubtful Guest, Michael Richter, Davis Walden, Denny Dudrop, Myth Mouse, Callie Wolf, Brendan and Bishop Bridge, Twiglets, Joanna, Stan Sitzman, Scrambles, a Death Dealer, Aaron Adams, Nathan Mesnet, Ruth Adados, Carrie Holmes, Melissa Ray, <gasps> Sensational, Puts a Plenty, Uvula Nutri, Anomaly, Me, Tank, Colope, Loon, Faust, the Heavenly, Demonic Monster, David Carlton, Lord Praxima, Wendell the Third, Tracy Baby, and Waffle Marine are gonna bomb the shit out of your Yelp reviews, okay? I never should have hired some two bit, five dollar an hour lawyer off a fiver, okay? Last time I do that. You hear that? Yeah. But you're real scared now. Sure don't know what to do. What left you real speechless, huh? Yeah, me and all my friends from uh, patreon.com slash trimbus. 16% off till the till the end of June. Celebration of the fourth trim anniversary. Woo! Woo! They're all coming for you! You know, I, sometimes they do games with the patrons and the cast, and I I was really hoping I could get an invite to one of them, but, um, yeah, I'm just a free member because I didn't take advantage of the annual membership, even though I'm selling it, because I'm a hack, and that's what the mysterious call has information on, he knows I don't use my own products, but it's not my fault, I gotta pay so much alimony, (laughs) He told you so bad. Oh, fuck, you hung up. Roll for initiative. Well, that's kind of considerate. If I am who you say I am, do you really think this was your best course of action? Okay, Walter White. Yeah, we're gonna make it my turn. I'm gonna use action point to be first. Okay. 
All right, kill got an 11. Butch, you expend an action point to go first. What do you do as you are surrounded by the three spirits and the nightclub manager is currently not in your sight? I'm going to use the ability all day, target two of the spirits. Okay. And fire my pistol. Who are you going for, Cindy, Mindy, or Wendy? Let's go for Cindy and Mindy with the gun. Okay. That's a five. Okay, that is a mixed success. So you ready the pistol. The first shot goes straight through Cindy, dealing three damage. Cindy lets out a... And then you go to shoot at Mindy, but before you can fire off the shot, Mindy is already like quickly on Cindy and grabbing her and you just barely miss. It whizzes past and grazes the side of her head. In the weeds tier two, first attack automatically deals double damage. Oh shit, okay. You instead deal six damage with this impact. Mindy grabs Cindy, she falls. You see the blood begin to pour out. You've wasted two bullets, so please mark that. Okay. And Mindy goes, oh my god, Wendy, 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 stay with me, stay with me. And you see Cindy uh, puts a hand, a bloodied hand, to her cheek and says, I always liked you the best. And gives her a kiss right on the lips as you see the lights fade out from her eyes. And Wendy goes, oh my god, what the fuck? I did not sign up for this. And she <laughs> takes off her heels and begins to run out of uh, out of the kitchen. But Mindy looks up with a fire in her eyes for her fallen sister. Okay, Cindy died. Cindy is dead. Tier three, if target killed, gain an action point. Fuck, okay. <laughs> I'm tackling the one running out the door to hold hostage. Oh, Jesus. Roll body with bad luck since like she started running already, but you have a chance to catch her. We get a six. Okay, that is a mixed success. So you run. You see Wendy has taken her heels off. Poof, you tackle her straight to the ground. Her heels clatter on either side of the wall. And uh, she begins like clawing at you and scratching at you. <clears throat> You're going to have to spend an action point now getting out from her grasp as you are both kind of restraining each other. <laughs> Until you do so, attacks on you will have luck. It is then Mindy's turn. Mindy looks at you, Kalana, and she goes, You don't want to work for the bad man, do you? You don't want to do this? I loved her. I loved her so much. And she's going to come up to you. 12. And she's going to say, who am I going to love now? And she's going to kiss you right on the mouth. Oh my God. And as she does, she holds you in this kiss. You feel this almost intoxicating feeling, similar to when you thought you were drinking the kava earlier. And you immediately feel your body and mind scores drop by one. Excellent. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mindy. Fuck. And she goes, see, that's better, isn't it? And then she will draw a dagger. Crit fails. Nice. She goes to plunge it into your gut. You stop it with your hand and you try and drive it back onto her. But in your inebriated state, you kind of feel like your muscles giving out rapidly and you push it off out of her hand and it clatters to the ground as she is disarmed. Kilana, it is then your turn. So she's going to pull out her fancy new knife to... Strike at Mindy. I'd be like, I'm sorry for it. Like, she will fully apologize. Like, I'm so sorry. Uh, but she is going to slash at her chest. Ooh, okay. Roll that attack. Keep in mind, your scores have dropped by one. That is a 13. That is a full success. Yeah. As you slash across her chest, she goes, ah! Ah! Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Uh, I. A lifetime of supply of shrimp. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you know what? I get it, girl. <laughs> and you still have one action point left. With that, she's gonna try and stab her the same way she's tried to stab me. <laughs> okay, go for God it. God damn it. I feel so bad. Ah, I'm not meant to hurt people. 
Nice. All right, that's an 11. That is another full success. As you go to drive the knife in her gut, she puts a hand on your hand, kind of like you did earlier, and she manages to step out of the way, but the knife slices along her love handles, and she goes, oh, you won't be able to grab me there now. Oh, fuck. Yeah, no, wasn't planning on it. Sorry. The flashy knife having been drawn, all the attention is on you, Kalana. And Butch, as you are wrestling on the ground with Wendy, you suddenly hear a, as three shots are fired off. Shit. So the first shot was a critical failure. A bullet comes flying from behind one of the ovens, actually. And Kilana, as you turn your head, you see the nightclub manager has actually just taken cover within the kitchen <laughs> and was speaking into a small radio in order to have his voice come through the PA system. What the fuck? And the bullet goes flying straight into Mindy. Uh, oh shit. It goes through her chest and blood splatters across your face, Kilana. She collapses onto you and she holds you and she puts a hand up to you. She goes, I always knew we'd go together. One girl boss to another. You fucking slay. And she just kind of collapses in your arms. Oh my God. However, you do not have time to dwell on that as while you are holding her, the nightclub manager reloads and fires two shots at you. The first one goes straight into your back, Kilana. Having removed your bulletproof jacket, you feel it enter your flesh and rob you of breath. <laughs> you almost drop Mindy as you both kind of fall to the ground on your knees. You take three damage from that shot. And the second one is a critical success. Oh my God. So you take six damage as it shoots into your chest. Uh. You feel it enter from behind and lodge itself inside of you as you have just taken a total of nine damage. <gasps> How are you looking? <laughs> I'm not looking great. Uh, I'm looking really bad, actually. I'm looking like no more. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna look up to look for Chef and literally just, uh, Chef? <coughs> Kilana face plants. As she reveals the area behind her, you see the nightclub manager reloading. A gun. Kilana, you are dying. Butch, it is your turn. Okay. Instead of using action point to, like, get away from the struggle, I'm just going to put the gun to this lady's head and shoot it. Woo! Okay, would you like to make it a called shot in order to try and inflict double damage? I'm going to do all day, spending a focus to target both of them. She's going to be my first one with the ability Butcher. Called shots have no bad luck. Fantastic. Sweet. That is a 10 plus mine in military. That's 12. That is a full success as she goes, please, I just want to go. Her brains splatter as we see Butch's eyes, the pupils grow wide and black as something has been awakened as he sees Kalana hit the deck. And you roll on the ground and without even taking the time to aim, you just come up with the gun in the perfect position. Fire a shot straight into the nightclub manager, dealing three damage. You see it clatters against something hard and he goes, I just got this new armor made. And you see you have torn a hole and kind of caused him to stagger as he rips this bulletproof vest off. You have shattered his armor. Oh, fuck. I should have called it. You have one action point left. Yeah, I'm going to call it on him and do it. You expend a focus to call a shot. What are you aiming for? I'm aiming for his head. <laughs> okay, roll that. That's a 10 plus mind and military is a 12 again. Okay. You see the straight shooter pulls out his gun, aims it. You can tell it is dead on target. He is about to pull that trigger and it is going to come flying straight at you. But before he can, you fire off your next shot and it cuts straight through his throat. Well played. Before he fades out, he's gonna walk up to him and say, See your mistake. He looks into your eyes, both angry, but also with respect as <laughs> you almost think he nods in agreeance and the light leaves his eyes. Kilana, make a death roll, please. Okay, that's a 10 minus one is a nine. You lucky duck. Butch, what do we see you do as you see that Kilana's on the ground? <laughs> He's gonna find any any latex gloves in the kitchen. 
put them on. There are some <laughs> mounted on the wall that you can grab. Food safety is important. He's going to look for a first aid kit in the kitchen. Give me a mind roll. <laughs> Guys, better, you nasty fucks. It is the fop bucket. <laughs> oh, but it's a natural 12? With a natural 12, you find two first aid kits. Awesome. <laughs> we are going to stop the bleed, plug up those holes, wrap up bandages, patching everything up. And with that, Kilana, you are unconscious but stable. You take no trauma. <gasps> That's crazy. As <laughs> one, you have gotten incredibly lucky with the way these bullets have torn through you. And two, Butch has very quickly not only dispatched your enemies, but taken care of you as you open your eyes to see Butch Orson looking down at you under the dingy nightclub kitchen lights. Take it easy. Are you all right? Uh, yeah. Considering I just got shot, I'm actually kind of okay. It's nice. To, it was nice to rest for a moment. What kind of gun did the sharp shooter have it looked like it was the same and he was just known for being a very quick shot okay i'm taking his whatever bullets he has left okay yeah butch you reload up to six bullets i hit him in the head right you hit him in the throat i think i'm gonna put his suit on if it fits <laughs> yeah it does this guy had a goatee right yeah does he have any hair yes long slicked back black hair very greasy looking great he's gonna take some of the greasy hair, grab scissors from the first aid kit, snip a piece off, and stick it onto his chin for the goats. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Give me a mind roll with bad luck, because this is like super improvised. Kilana's just like watching this happen, like slowly blinking. It's a two. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he looks like a little kid like trying to draw a mustache on his face. Yeah. Chef, chef, maybe mm -mm, You're mm -mm. right. Yeah. And he starts ripping it off. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Go to the truck and wait there. <sighs> yes, chef. And she's already like trying to get up and walk over to the truck. Yeah, Kilana, you've never felt this bad in your life. Yeah. <sighs> Please don't die. A lifetime supply of shrimp is on the line, so please just just do me that solid, okay? You've got it. Kilana heads out to the truck, and Butch, with obstacles removed and having abided by the rules of engagement, Woo. you make your way through the nightclub. The blasting music has obscured any indication of the fight that just took place, as young people from all walks of life bump and grind the night away, no small amount of intoxicants coursing through their young, sweaty bodies. You squeeze your way through the crowd, and after a little more contact than you may have desired, you come out on the other side and find the stairwell leading to the Frenchman's upstairs office. You climb up the stairs and see the door. Okay, I'm just walking to the door. Okay. You walk into the office. A disgustingly gaudy thing. White marble floors, white countertops, gold and silver accents, too many of them. Crystal chandeliers twinkle and clink, illuminating cabinets full of trinkets. Impressionist paintings, not good ones, in overly intricate gold frames overpower whatever elegance this room could once have held. And beneath an open window you see a series of white bedsheets tied together, forming a makeshift rope. <laughs> As a stout, round man in a white suit and red vest tries to muster the courage to climb down and out, a few strands of wispy hair cover a shiny, balding head. A weak mustache drips with sweat. Behold, Clement Sormont, the Frenchman. Yeah, he's going to take the pistol out, aim it at him, and click it and go, stop right there. Ah, I surrender! Please do not harm me! Please! He waves the white bed sheet rope. <laughs> he, like, gestures with the pistol to beckon him to come back inside. He had only just managed to put one leg out. He, like, pulls it back in and he says, I'm surrendering. I'm coming in peace. Please have mercy. And uh, he kneels down at your feet and almost bows to you, almost kissing your shoes. I keep the gun trained on him and I lock the door. You go to lock the door and as you turn back around, you just hear a... 
as a little can comes out, and he uses his ability, mustard gas. The can explodes. And this large cloud comes out. It deals one damage, armor piercing, so directly to your HP, and you begin to choke, and you can't see. <laughs> However, you also hear the Frenchman begin to cough. <laughs> too close! Too close! <laughs> As he begins to try to run out of the cloud, but you cannot see through it. What do you do? Yeah, I'd rather not take any more damage, so I'll walk out of the cloud and keep that pistol trained on him. You calmly walk out, and you see him, like, frantically crawling on all fours. Messy! 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 However, you suddenly feel something. Up your trouser pant. And then up your shirt. Uh, no! And then up... No! Your head. Don't do that! No! <laughs> As the tiny rat grabs your hair. You're so stupid. And the creature that you recognize as Remy, his pet rat, begins to pilot you. He has rolled successfully, so you will use an action point running towards the window with the intent to jump out. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> as you do, you see the Frenchman begin to try to run for the door, but the cloud of mustard gas is in the way. So he's like, uh, no, wait. Uh, uh, and he's like crouching around trying to get around it. It is your turn. You use one action point running towards the window. And like you involuntarily feel yourself like your head goes out the window. But one of your action points is still free for yourself. Great. I'm plucking the rat off my head and throwing him down the window. Okay. Roll a, roll a body uh, check. I'm going to say bad luck because Remy's small oh and lithe. Oh my God. Minus two from bad luck, so we're at six. Just before you feel the urge to jump out the window uncontrollably, you manage to wrest control of your own arm for a moment. You grab Remy, almost by the throat, but by his entire body. With that make success, however, he will get one free attack. That is a full success. Oh, uh, and he bites you, <laughs> dealing one HP of damage to your hand. However, he does not manage to dig his teeth in, and you manage to avoid his famous septic bite. Oh my god. As you fling him out the window. <laughs> and the Frenchman goes, No! Remy! <laughs> my most loyal friend! Oh, and he's gonna still be trying to make it to the door, as he is gonna try to run and use his slippery feet oh uh, to have luck on escapes. No! Oh my god. <laughs> he gets a three, which is a failure. So he oh, runs into god. the gas and begins to cough. <laughs> And he walks like backwards out of the cloud of gas and bumps straight into your chest. Don't be afraid, Mr. Sermont. Huh. Anyone can fail. He doesn't turn his body, he just turns his head and he goes, I surrender? I was sent here to have a meeting with you. We, uh, oui. the butcher, he has betrayed us. I was told you could help me find the devil. Roll a will check, you get double good luck on this one because of his straight coward. <laughs> Eight, three to make it 11. He looks at you. He squints his eyes, puts on a hard face. Uh, you see sweat drip down his brow line. You see some of the ink that he uses to dye his hair black is running in the sweat. Okay, fine. I'll tell you where he is. If you guarantee my safety, give me your weapons. I tell you where he is. And I walk away. I shoot his right butt cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this would kill him. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, no! I forgot about his armor. Okay, you Bun see armor. <laughs> you see the bullet bounce off of his Kevlar white pants, and he goes, "Ah, my tush! Oh, 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 what do you want? I surrendered. This is against the Geneva Conventions." Where is the devil? You will let me go. We. Oui? We. Oui. The devil is old up in Florida. We got a new resort and restaurant we're opening there. The building is still under construction. It doesn't look like much on the outside yet. He figured it'd be the only place he might be able to hide from you. Where in Florida? In Daytona Beach. <laughs> What's the name? I can give you the address. If you look up the name, there will be nothing on the maps. Let's have it. On my desk, the first drawer on the left, there's a sticky note with the location. Thank you. He knocks him out. Oof. Okay, roll body with luck. 
Oh, it's a seven. You pistol whip him and he goes, nah! but then you also accidentally fire off a bullet oh, <laughs> and it shit. buries itself in one of the walls. So obviously, I'm going to look for that sticky note, but I want to search for goodies in this office. Okay, give me a mind check. Seven again. Okay, you look around and you have spent a lot of time in this office in the past and you know that it has not changed much in the years that you've been gone. It is full of very valuable trinkets. It's stuff that when you were a poorer man, you would have stolen in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. As someone who does not have to worry about monetary means now, it all just looks kind of sad <laughs> that this is the empire that this man has built. And knowing the Frenchman, you also know that there are not going to be weapons here. Damn. Just weird collectibles and valuables. Oh, uh, do I find the rat cage or something? <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, on his desk, there is a little like rat bed next to the computer monitor. And it kind of looks like a Barbie like dream house, but like rat themed. No, I won't do that. Actually, that's too much. Yeah, this guy knows too much, so I'm just going to slit his throat. <gasps> you walk up to slit his throat, and you hear, even in his, like, concussed, passed out state, he says, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. You said that already. And then he cuts his throat. <laughs> you slit the Frenchman's throat as blood begins to spill out on the floor. And I'm going to take the sticky note with the address. You open the desk drawer and you see a sticky note that says 666 South Palmetto Avenue. P.S. If someone is stealing this note, I surrender. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> um, taking the dream house thing and I'm searching this guy's body before I leave. You find a collection of rare uh, Roman coins in his pocket. It's useless. And the rat's probably dead, so I'll actually leave the Barbie dream house. I'll make <laughs> the bed in case the rat is alive. I'll make the bed in the Barbie dream house, but then I'll, I'll leave after that. And as you head back to the truck with your injured comrade, Somewhere off in the distance, we see a stiff, dead rat, and their paw twitches to life in a fist. <laughs> this has been Yes Chef. Yes Chef features the vocal talents of Amanda Fernandez Acosta as Kilona Golds and Nicholas Benetatos as Butch Awesome. The rest of the world is voiced by your BG, Giancarlo Herrera, with editing by Anna Skunar and sound design by Giancarlo Herrera. A special thank you to all the patrons for supporting the show. Mwah, that's a French kiss from all of us at Whimsic Productions. If you would like to support the show, consider signing up at patreon.com slash dreambus to get access to exclusive bonus content, free merch, and the chance to include items in the show or have NPCs named after you. There are quite a few this season. You may also consider leaving a review of Dungeons & Dreambus on the podcast app of your choice or sharing us with your friends and on social media. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you all next week.